Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. Today, we're going to be connecting with God through a Bible story about someone who had to make a choice. So stick around, see what the teachers have for you at the end of the program, Kids Connection, and following this program with your classroom teacher. Now, this past week now has been a cool week. However, today is going to be a hot day. It has been a hot day yesterday, today, expected to be a hot day tomorrow. So drink a lot of water, stay in the air conditioning, stay in the pool, go to the beach, make sure that you're not exposed to the sun. It's going to be a hot day. I have my water. I'm drinking a lot of water and I hope you do too. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program. And if you're a regular, it's always good to have you back. Thank you for joining us and for being a part of our Kids Connection program. Last week, I said that we were going to take Kid to make some visits. Now, we took Kid out and Kid stopped by two houses last week and say hello to some kids. And now I want you guys to watch the video as Kid made some visits to the kids here in Glendale and Los Angeles last week. Watch the video. It was so fun to see Kid saying hello to all the boys and girls. And if you want to visit from Kid, send us an email, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. Give us your address. Tell mom and dad to coordinate with me. I will drive Kid to say hello to you and from a distance, and we'll take some pictures. And it's always good to see you guys. I loved seeing the kids. I miss you guys so much. And every chance I get to see one of the kids or one of you guys, I, I, it always brings joy to my heart. Speaking of joy to my heart, we just had a birthday yesterday. Yes, I am talking about Sammy. Sammy had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Sammy. If you are having a birthday or if you are having a birthday that is coming up or already passed and if, if we missed it, send us a note. Let us know that it's your birthday. We want to wish you a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Sammy. Sammy turned five yesterday. We love you. We miss you. And happy birthday to all the boys and girls who we have missed a birthday so far. But let us know. Have mom and dad contact me direct vdkidsconnection at gmail.com we would love to wish you a happy birthday on the air okay thank you so much now i'm gonna invite you to stand up get ready to sing our song of the day today the song of the day is i have decided to follow jesus you know this song i know this song let's sing the song together about our theme for today
Wow, that was awesome. I loved it. Singing the song and hopefully you guys got to sing it along with mom, dad, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whoever you're watching with at home. Maybe someone, maybe a friend that is watching you uh, while mom and dad are busy doing something else. So I hope you guys had fun. Now I'm, gonna, I'm going to invite you to bow your head so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful hot Sabbath. Thank you because the boys and girls have joined us today for the program. We ask that you be with us as we learn more about you, as we connect with you today. Learn, help us to um, keep us safe during this pandemic. And thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Excellent. Now, let me ask you something. Have you been to an island before? An island? What is an island? Well, some of you don't know. An island is a piece of land that is surrounded by water. I have been on several islands before. But today's missionary story is about a, a, a girl named Esther who lives in an island. And she decided to do something different. Let's watch the story of Esther who lives in the Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands, a nation of hundreds of islands in the South Pacific, is home to 600,000 people with more than 52,000 Seventh-day Adventists. That is nearly one Adventist for every 11 people. The church in the Solomons is growing. We are excited that God is leading the church. And the church is growing so quickly that we have a huge logistical challenge. We need many Bibles. We have a number of institutions, more than 400 companies, and we've got about 197 uh, yeah, organized churches. In health, we have one hospital. In the education sector, we have uh, 13 high schools, and we have more than 100 uh, schools in total. We have between 14 and 15,000 students attending all our schools. We have a significant number of baptisms also happening every year through our schools. It's a big mission to run and the islands are scattered over many, many kilometers of ocean. And so we have our challenges. Barikama is uh, actually one of the oldest uh, college here in the Solomon Island. It started way back in 1948, and uh, that was after the Second World War. And it is a place, actually, it is more focused on mission, or uh, training missionaries. Uh, in this uh, college, we have uh, students who have difficulties in their school fee. There are some children who really struggle. Some children even, because they, were, they are interested to become Adventists, that their parents didn't want to even meet their school fee. So we think that the school must try to help them. Nestor's family is not Adventist and finds it hard to pay school fees. But Nestor chose to come to this school because of its reputation for quality education. I work hard on holidays and even weekends for the school fee. Every weekend I go down to town to make us uh, marketing to earn an income to support me while I'm in school. Nestor would escape the school grounds on Sabbath when everyone was focused on special activities. On this day, she would sell donuts at the market to pay for school and buy herself the supplies she needed. When the school staff noticed Nestor was missing, they were worried, but they soon learned why she was working so hard, and they wanted to help. One day, a school administrator called Nestor into the office to tell her she couldn't leave school during Sabbath hours. He also told her that she'd been accepted into the Student Support Fund. She would no longer have to work to pay her fees. I am very thankful of the Student Support Fund, of the school who had support me with clothes and school fee support. My plan for the future is I want to become somebody to help my parents. And I wish that I could become a, a doctor. Please pray for the people of the Solomon Islands. May God bless them as they learn the truths of the Bible and feel the love of God through human hands. That was so cool what Esther is doing to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now we can help too by 
being supportive with our offerings. So click on the link above where it says offerings and ask mom and dad to help donate to the missionaries that are sharing the love of Jesus, just like Esther in other places in the world. Okay? Thank you so much for your support. Now, today we're going to be talking about um, a, a choice of faith. It's the story of someone in the Bible. But to help you understand about choices, I'm going to ask you to join me on a game that we're going to play right now. This is going to be fun. I don't know what you're going to choose, but you'll know and hopefully you have fun. Join me on the table down here so we can watch, so we can participate on this game today. Okay, now this is the game that I was talking about. And on this game here, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of numbers, one through seven on my table. What it is, is that underneath each bowl, I have something. I forgot which one is which, but, and you don't know which, what is underneath. I want you to choose a bowl. Have you, mom, dad, whoever is watching with you, go ahead and invite them to play this game with you. Choose a different number. You cannot pick the same. So you all, you will all have a different number. And I'm going to reveal them to you and you will see what's underneath each bowl. And let's see what you end up with, okay? If you were, if we were all here present, I was going to invite someone and uh, and actually give whatever is underneath each bowl to that person that chose, okay? But since we're not, you're, we're just gonna do this for fun. You're gonna choose just to see what you got and uh, I'm gonna reveal it to you. So here we go, drum rolls. Between one and seven, which one did you pick? I'm going to start with number four. Let's see what's underneath number four. Are you ready? Did you pick number four? Here we go. Hey, underneath number four, there is a beautiful, juicy apple. Ooh, this apple smells good. Oh, I wish I could eat it now. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat it after the program. So if you pick number four, you, you end up with an apple. Good for you. That's nice, nice and healthy. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go with number three. I wonder what's underneath number three. Number three is, oh, this is funny. Underneath number three is a whole bunch of screws. Look at this. There are screws. You see that? Uh, I wonder what you're going to do with the screws if you picked number three. But this is funny. I can actually use a lot of screws. And this is a big one. Look at this. Look how big the screw is. That's a big one. But if you chose number three, you, you would have ended up with a whole bunch of screws. Uh, let's see what else here can we go for. Oh, I'm going to go with number six now. Whatever's on number six. Ready? Here we go. Did you pick number six? Underneath number six are a whole bunch of Bible verses. Look at this. You Different colors. There's a blue one. There's a purple one. There's a green. There's a blue. And what you do is you pick one every day and you read that Bible verse, that scripture reading on the day that you choose. So you don't know what you're getting, but you're reading a different Bible verse every single day. And you would have ended up with a whole bunch of Bible verses. Okay. Did you pick number six? Did you like it? It was fun? All right. I want to know what you guys picked, okay? So email me and let me know. Uh, let's go with number number five now. Okay. Let's see what's inside number five. Are you ready? Did you pick five? Here we go. Oh, it's dirt. <laughs> it's a whole bunch. It's a bowl full of dirt. Did you pick number five? Did it surprise you? Yeah? Yeah. I don't know what uh I could put the dirt on on my plants at home. I wonder what you would do with the with the dirt that you got if you chose number 5. Now let's go with number 1. Let's see what's underneath number 1. <gasps> oh, yes. I'm going to be careful here, but look. Number 1, there's water. Can you see it? I hope you can. You see that? Water, fresh water, and as hot as today is. Hmm. Oh, nice and cool water. So if you pick number one, 
you end up with nice, fresh water to drink on this hot day like today, okay? All right, so now we have number two and number seven. Did you pick number two or number seven? We're gonna go with number two first. So let's see what's underneath number two. Whoa, look! If you pick number two, you end up with money. Look at all the money that is here. There's a $5, there's a, a $10 bill, there's a $1 bill, there's a $100 bill. Whoa, look at that. If you had chosen number, or if you chose number two, you would have ended up with $116. Whoa, that's a lot of money. Did you pick number two? Yes, you did? No? Oh, did you wish that you had number two? <laughs> okay, now let's go for our last one. Number seven. I wonder what's underneath number seven. Are you ready? Number seven, there is <gasps> a whole bunch of balloons in here. There are 100 water balloons here. There are those balloons that you fill with water and you have water balloon fights. It's a lot of fun. Again, on a hot day like today. Let me see if I can. There you go. You can also play, instead of, instead of playing like water balloons, you can also fill 100 balloons and throw it up in the air and have some fun. What would you do with 100 balloons if you had chosen 100 balloons? What would you do? Would you have a lot of fun playing with your mom, dad, or siblings? Huh? 100 balloons you would have got if you had chosen number seven. Now, here is everything. We have water, we have $116, we have some screws, we have an apple, we have dirt, we have Bible verses, we have balloons, all different options and different choices, but you didn't know what was underneath, did you? Let me ask you something. Would it have been better if you knew what was underneath each bowl? I think it would have been, huh? Would you have chosen a different bowl had you known what was underneath? Or would you have still remained or kept the, the, the one, the choice that you chose? If you end up with the dirt, or with the screws, or with an apple, would you have chosen to give that up and instead of choosing number five for the dirt, you would have got, you would have chosen number two with the money or number one with the water. I would like to know if you, if it would have made a difference by knowing what was underneath each bowl or each number. You know, kids, our lives is full of choices. We make choices every day. I don't know about you, but I think I make maybe hundreds of choices every day. Some choices are big, other choices are small. And some choices may have a, a big impact in my life, and other choices have a small impact on my, on my life. And it can change our lives based on the choices that we have made for better or for worse. Today we're going to listen to a story in the Bible about a woman named Ruth. Have you heard a story of Ruth who had to make some important decisions? But the most important decision that she had to make was to believe in God. That was the most important decision. We're going to learn about that because our theme for today is a choice of faith. I hope you enjoyed the game that we played. Play the same game with mom and dad at home or with someone else. Hide things underneath cups and choose different items and see what you end up with and see how fun that can be, especially on a, on a day like today that you don't want to be outside on the sun. Maybe this is a fun game that you can play indoors, okay? Now I'm going to invite you to come back and sing our song of the day. Sing in our song of the day, which is, I have decided to follow 
Jesus. Because that is a choice that I make. Let's go ahead and sing our song of the day. Stand up and sing with us. No turning back, no turning back. Whoa! Thank you so much for singing with us. It is a choice that we have to follow Jesus. Remember that. Let's go ahead and close our program with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the fun that we had at Kids Connection today. Thank you for all the boys and girls that are watching this at home. Bless them and help them to make right decisions every day of their lives. Be with the, with the teachers that are going to present the story now of Ruth and help us to learn a little bit more, a, a little more about you and get connected with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent. Thank you for being a part of, our, of another Kids Connection program. Please come back next week as we have another activity planned for you and songs and fun. So I can't wait to see you guys here at Kids Connection. I wish I could give you a hug, but we know the new thing now. It is air hug. So here comes my air hug to you guys. I love you. I miss you. And I will see you guys soon, okay? Don't forget to drink a lot of water. And this weekend, because it is a holiday weekend, we are not having Zoom, a uh, kid to kid Zoom tomorrow. So we're not having that tomorrow, okay? Don't worry about it. Uh, we will come back next week for another Kids Connection program. Until then, God bless you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, kids. Hi, guys. I don't know about you all, but I am exhausted. Working at home, doing school at home has been quite a challenge, and each of us have different challenges. But I am so thankful for the Lord's day of rest He has given us. 
So I hope your week went better uh, than the weeks before. All right, this morning we are going to be studying Ruth, the story of Ruth. So to find her book in the Bible, you will have to figure it out. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. That's how we're gonna find it. Joshua judges Ruth. So this is in the time of the judges. Remember that Samson was a judge? You know, every day we make a lot of decisions and we wanna make the best decisions for ourselves, for our health, for our happiness. And sometimes it's hard to know, right? So I have some questions for you guys. What would you do if a baby monkey showed up on your doorstep? Take care of it. What if your parents said you could do anything you wanted for your birthday. I'll get shaved ice in a video game truck. What would you do if you got $1,000? I would use the $1,000 to make more money. If I had $1,000, I would give 250 towards homeless shelters, 250 to food banks, 300 towards my family, and 200 for whatever I want to get. What would you eat if you could eat anything for dinner? A cheeseburger. What would you do if you could pick any pet you wanted? I want a kitty and a puppy. Some decisions we make are more important than others. They could change our life. Today, we'll be learning about Ruth and a very important decision she made that changed her life. The most important decision you make in your entire life is to choose to follow God. We have to trust God to help us make wise choices. And the way to do that is to spend time studying the Bible, to spend time in prayer with God, and to be surrounded by friends who believe in the one true God like you. So our application verse today is in Hebrews, towards the end of the Bible in the New Testament, Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse six. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Which means we know God exists even though we can't see him and it's our job to be faithful to God even when we can't see him. Like air, let's do an experiment with air. Dylan won this in one of the fundraisers at his school once, and it's one of those super long balloons. And see, it's not filled up with anything, right? And what you're supposed to do is you open the end that can open, and you run it through the air as you're running, and it fills up into like this big, huge balloon. And that's a lot of fun, right? But I, how did it get blown up? How, we didn't see the air get into it. We just ran with it and it filled up like magic. There's like, we can't see the air, but because of that, we know it exists. So maybe you don't have one of those big, huge balloons, or maybe you don't even have a balloon at home, but you might have a glove at home. So I can even use my own breath to blow this up. But when I blow, you don't see anything coming out of my mouth. You believe it's there because this happens. Watch. <laughs> see, something came out of me into this glove to make it blown up. But you couldn't see it before. You trust that it's there because things happen. So if you have one of these, you can tie it off. You could draw a face on it, fold his thumb around, and you can have long, tall hair, which can remind us that there's air in here and we can't even see it, but we believe it's there because things happen. So let's go listen carefully and find out what happens to Ruth. In the story of Ruth, we'll learn how Naomi and Ruth trusted God even when their life was very difficult and tragic. All right, so the story starts out with 
Naomi and her husband, Elimelech. And they lived in Judah, but then there was a terrible famine and they had to leave because there was nothing to eat. So a famine means when there's no crops growing in the farmlands because they were either devastated by no water or no rain for a very long time, or maybe some bugs devastated their land. So they had to leave in order to live. But where they were going was this place called Moab. And in Moab, the people didn't worship God. So they were leaving Judah, a place where everyone worshiped the one true God, to go to a foreign land where they didn't worship God. But they chose to go there. And they had two sons. And the two sons grew up there and married women from Moab. We all know what happened to Samson, right? He fell in love with Philistine women and they didn't worship the one true God. Eventually, Samson lost his faith because he was mixed in with the wrong crowd. Well, so in this story, one of their sons marries a woman named Orpah. And then another son married a woman named Ruth. So this story is about Ruth and Naomi. So Naomi was very important in the lives of Orpah and Ruth. So Naomi taught them about God and they lived together as a family. So back in those days, once a woman grows up and gets married, she leaves her family and she's obligated to her husband's family. So what happens is very sad. So Naomi's husband, Elimelech, he dies. So now Naomi is a widow. A widow means her husband has died. And back in the Bible times, widows were really low in society because they couldn't take care of themselves. Like in today's time, if a woman's husband dies, well, she's still able to work and provide for herself, although it's definitely difficult. Um, and she you know, needs more help than that. But back in the Bible times, women couldn't do anything but take care of the children. There's nowhere for you to live because you don't have a family to provide for you. You don't have a husband to provide for you and you can't work because only the men worked. So that was very rough on them, especially Naomi. And Naomi's older, she couldn't remarry really. But Naomi's taken care of by her two sons. So when the husband dies, the sons take care of the rest of the family. But then her two sons die. So Ruth's husband dies and Orpah's husband dies. All three of them are widows. And what happens back in the Bible's times is if the mother's two sons die, it's the responsibility of her other sons to then marry these two women. But she didn't have any more sons. So they were all widows. They couldn't live or survive without husbands. So Naomi is teaching them about God, but they had a very tragic situation. And Naomi decides that these two girls need to go back to their family because they're young enough to remarry again. But in that culture, these two women are obligated to Naomi and they have a good relationship with each other. Naomi taught them about God and they cry. And Naomi says, you need to go back to your family because I have nothing here for you. I can't have any more children. I don't have any more sons. You go back to your family where you can have a life for yourselves. It was a very hard decision for them to make. Orpah decides to go back to her family. Ruth says, I will never leave your side. It had been over 10 years since Naomi left Judah and she had nowhere else to go. So she said she had to go to Judah. And Ruth said, I am going to go with you and your God will be my God. So Ruth made a very important decision that day. She made a decision to follow the one true God. And they went back to Judah because Naomi had nowhere else to go. And she had some male relatives in Judah that could help her. So they went together to Judah. There was no more famine there. When they got there, they hadn't seen Naomi in a very long time. So they were very happy to see her. And one of Naomi's male relatives took them in so they could live in a house. It's a very difficult decision to make to move somewhere new. 
First of all, Naomi had to move in the first place because of the famine, and that was a very difficult decision to make. And then she had to move back home to Judah after the famine was over because she had nothing else. And Ruth, it was hard for her to leave her family in the first place, but then to actually leave them into another country in a strange land. That's incredible faith that Ruth was developing. But she saw something special in Naomi because Naomi knew about the one true God who always wins. Because we believe in God doesn't mean we're not going to have difficult problems in our life that we face because this world is a sinful, broken place. But God always has a plan to take care of us. We have to have the faith to believe. So in Hebrews 11, chapter 6, without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Ruth was rewarded for her decision. And we'll see what happens in the story of Ruth next week. But the first step is to follow God. That's what's important about telling others about Jesus and showing his character in the things we do because we bring others to him. We're like magnets. Others are attracted to us because we have something special they haven't found yet. And so for our craft today, we're going to do something special for others. And we're going to make a sugar scrub. Now the reason we're going to make this is because everybody's hands are being overwashed. Teachers who are preparing to go back into the classroom, they have a much more rigorous cleaning schedule. Even in my home, I'm cleaning more knobs and things using alcohol wipes and spraying with Clorox all over the place. So there's a lot of chemicals going on to our hands. And then in the season of autumn, that's when the weather turns really dry and it really affects our skin, especially me. If I don't wear gloves when I wash the dishes, my fingers crack and bleed and my knuckles do too. So I have to slather on thick lotion and sleep in it overnight so that it can heal. And so with all of the cleaning and hand washing we're doing more than before, people need to take care of their hands. So we're gonna make a nice gift for somebody else. Okay, Dylan's gonna experience a sugar scrub for the first time. So scoop a handful in your hands and then you're gonna go over the sink and rub it around together all over your hands like you're washing your hands. How does it feel? Uh, rough. And now you can rinse it off with warm water. When it's off, you can dry your hands. How do your hands feel? So smooth and silky. If you don't want to make it, you can always buy it, but it's fun to make. So Trader Joe's usually comes out with one during the holiday season. They make great gifts, but also you can find them at uh, Bath and Body Works and they come in different scents. But we'll show you how to make your, your very own. And what you're gonna need is a glass jar to put it in because we're gonna use essential oils. So what you're gonna need for a homemade sugar scrub is a glass bowl to mix everything in. You're going to need two cups of sugar. For a sugar scrub, I only had cane sugar. I would probably use a regular sugar that is a little bit softer on the hands when you're scrubbing it around your hands. Um, cane sugar is great to cook with though, so if you haven't made the switch, you should switch it out now because the regular sugar is all genetically modified. I'm going to need three quarter cups of a fractionated coconut oil. And then you're going to want to scent it with something yummy. So there's essential oils, and you can find all of these ingredients on Amazon, actually. And you're also going to need a glass container, like a canning jar, which has, doesn't have to be this big, but it has to have a wide enough opening so somebody can put their hand inside. Um, unfortunately though, the store I went to was all out of them because people are busy making jams and pickles and stuff uh, while they're at home. So, but you can probably find those on Amazon. I haven't looked or some hardware stores sell them. 
And then, so for essential oils, you pick a scent that you love. I love citrus. So I have some lime, orange, and grapefruit here. Citrus scents make me feel really happy. It's just so wonderful. Lavender is actually known to be calming. So I'm gonna use lavender because we're all pretty anxious. Mmm, lavender is very strong and it's and it's supposed to calm us down. So for my gift for others, I think I'm going to get some jars. But for now, I'll show you how to make this. So you're gonna put two cups of sugar into the bowl. When using essential oils, they shouldn't be put in plastic. I'm using a quarter cup here, so I need eight of these, or two cups. And if you wanna make it super special, you can add some vitamin E oil. Vitamin E oil is known for healing. Okay, so we got our two cups of sugar in here, and then we're going to add our three quarter cup of um, an oil. Coconut oil is a good one, especially for hands. The important thing is that when you give this to somebody, make sure you tell them it's a hand scrub because if they, it'll feel really good to put all over your body in the shower, but it, because it has oil in it, it's gonna make the bottom of your bathtub super slippery and dangerous. So I do not recommend using this anywhere else but on your hands, even though it really feels lovely. You're gonna put three quarter cups. I have a quarter cup measure in here. That'll do three times. Okay, if I had some vitamin E oil, I would go ahead and add four teaspoons. Um, I need to get some of that. And then I am going to put in lavender and you need 10 to 20 drops. It depends on how strong it is of a scent. So start with 10 and then you'll smell it, shake it out and you can see it drop. Although this is almost empty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's not enough. It smells good, but it could be stronger. So I'm gonna do 10 more drops and then we'll mix it all together. So you're gonna grab a spoon, mix it all together because there's some sugar that hasn't been absorbed yet. You'll probably get about three sugar scrub gifts from this mix. And you're gonna package it up in those jars and put a bow on top and then I would deliver it to a friend who I know may be doing some extra cleaning because of the job they're returning to. You leave a card with the Bible verse or promise on it. And if they're really struggling during this time, it would be a great way to cheer someone up. So when we do nice things for others, we do it out of love because God loves us. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sabbath day you have given us to rest from the toils of this world. And please help us to be there for others in small ways. And when we face decisions that are difficult, please help us to pray about it, ask for your guidance, and talk to others who love you and think about you in the same way that we do so we can make the right choice, especially about returning to school or to stay home or what do we do. Um, please be with all of the teachers, parents, and students out there that are struggling to survive the week.